Hello everybody and welcome to our first edition of What's in Our Camera Bag. We've got some fresh new young talent doing some things that I know you haven't heard before. One, two, three, listen. So why do I say first edition? Because obviously we have a lot of different jobs and these require for different types of uh, gear. So for this job it's going to be our commercial travel edition because we're traveling for a commercial job and this job is seven hours away, it's in Croatia, we are driving there tomorrow and we're shooting a music video. But other than the music video, we're also shooting a little bit of a travel video for our own channel. And since we're going to do a lot of traveling in the near future, we also want to have the gear a little bit towards travel videos as well. So a little bit about the job we have. So that gives you an impression of why we bring this gear and not all of our gear. The music festival we are going to shoot the music video at is at a secret island uh, somewhere in Croatia. So we can't even take the car onto the island, so we want to travel as light as possible. As of right now, we still don't really know what our accommodation looks like, if we're in some kind of tent or bungalow or if we have a hotel or something. So we don't really want to bring too much that we have to carry around because we have no idea what we have to expect there. So we wanted to fit all of our gear into two travel backpacks. So usually when shooting a music video, obviously we need our own lights and we have the big stabilizer and a lot of equipment. But like I said, this is going to be a DJ video for electronic music. So we don't really have these stage performance scenes. And the whole thing will be a lot of scripted parts. We also have an actress, but it will also have a little bit of the ambient real life feeling that a music festival entails. So we really want to go a little bit of guerrilla shooting, lots of handheld and we want to be quick to really capture all the emotions that is going on at the festival. So let's start with what we actually bring and why. So first off, of course, there's the Canon C200, which is our cinema camera, which is the heart piece of the whole operation. And this is what we shoot most of our commercial videos on, if not all of them. And this is just a beast of a camera and we also rig it in different ways and for this job as we want to have as small footprint as possible because this is also going to be our travel camera. Yes, a cinema EOS camera is going to be our travel camera. We want to have it rigged as small as possible. So we don't have a top handle, we don't have all the fancy stuff around. We only go with one monitor that we just mounted on top of the camera with the side handle and with all that we're good to go. So next up is obviously the godfather of travel videos and that is the 1DX Mark II. I think most people that do travel and even commercial work use the 1DX Mark II because it's just a beast at everything. It shoots 4K60, it shoots 120 frames and it also does awesome photography. And since if I only had to choose one camera, I obviously wouldn't take the uh, C200 because it doesn't shoot photos. Uh, this one does. But since Bella and I travel with the two of us, uh, one can take the 1DX and the other one is going to take the C200. So this one definitely goes into our bag for B-roll, for a little bit of crispy slow motion. We can also use it as a B-cam as it shoots 4K uh, 25 and 4K 60. And it also takes awesome photos. So this one definitely goes into our bag everywhere we go. All right, as for cameras, that should actually be enough, but we also bring our 5D Mark IV by Canon. Why? Because it's a small camera and we can also shoot uh, time lapses on it when we have the other cameras in use. Uh, we can also maybe use it as a vlogging camera because it has Wi-Fi built in. So, and maybe one of the cameras fail and so we have a backup camera. So it's not really that big of a deal because the camera isn't that big. So yeah, the 5D Mark IV also goes into our backpack. And since I already mentioned, it's the two of us. So we have two backpacks instead of one. So the 5D Mark IV just fits in perfectly. Uh, I don't have it right here because we're filming on it right now. So imagine the 5D being in the bag as well. So as for other cameras, these are obviously the big cameras, but we also have the small cameras and this is the GoPro Hero Session 4 as well as 5. We don't really use GoPros all that often because the image quality is just not good enough. As of right now, we don't really have an underwater housing for any of our cameras. We were looking them up, but this job was rather spontaneous uh, going to the festival, so we didn't really have the time to get anything for our bigger cameras. Plus, these things are really expensive, so I really want to do a little bit of research before I buy something. 
So the GoPros have to do for now if you want to do some underwater photography as well as videography. All right, our last camera is going to be a drone, of course, because we're traveling to an island. And I mean, if we do some kind of travel photography, videography, and we're shooting music video on an island, obviously we need a drone. Our weapon of choice here is the Mavic Pro. Why the Mavic Pro? Again, because of the small footprint. The thing is, in most um, urban locations and most big cities, you're not allowed to fly them commercially anyway. So really having a big Inspire 2 doesn't really make a lot of sense for us to own. So we have the Mavic Pro because it just goes into our backpack. So whenever we travel somewhere remote on a small island, on a travel destination, it actually makes a lot of sense to have a small camera uh, like the Mavic Pro that you can take anywhere. And with a little bit of tweaking, uh, the images out of the Mavic Pro are actually way enough for most commercial jobs. Now comes the big part, what lenses to take. Because obviously we can't take all of our lenses because it's just not enough room even though we're traveling with two backpacks so what kind of lenses do we bring and why so our really our newest purchase is the Sigma 18 to 35 1.8 why did I just purchase this lens for our production because I heard a lot of great things about it I have never used it to date so it's going to be really interesting uh, how this thing performs but the 1.8 and the 18 to 35 actually fits really nicely with the C200 and I actually imagine this lens to be our favorite lens for the C200 if it actually is as good as everybody says. So this one just goes on top of the C200 and you have a lot of uh, wide angle as well as open um, aperture if you want to shoot in low light and the 35 actually gives you a nice bokeh if you want to do some kind of portrait because it's a super 35 sensor in the C200 so there's a little bit of a crop factor so 18 to 35 actually sounds like a really good deal we also have the 16 to 35 by Canon but it's only a 2.8 and for the price of about $700 or something uh, we actually want to um, take this one and see how good it actually is. So another wide angle lens is the 16 to 35 by Canon. This is actually an awesome lens. So why bring two lenses with the same focal length? Because it's not really the same focal length. The Sigma lens is a crop factor lens for APS-C sensors like the one or similar to the one on the C200. But it doesn't really work with our full frame cameras like the 5D or the 1DX Mark II. So if you want to shoot wide angled on a full frame camera, we need the 16 to 35 as well in our backpack to shoot some awesome time-lapse uh, photography or some really like cool landscape pictures. So this one goes into our backpack as well. So the next lens up is the 24 to 70 2.8 by Canon. So this one is actually pretty nice uh, for just, you know, travel photography as well if you need to be versatile because it covers a lot of focal length. And since we want to do a lot of run and gun, as I already said, this one is probably a really good choice. So one is shooting with the 18 to 35 on the C200 and the other one can just like take the 24 to 70 uh, on the 1DX for example and then we cover a lot of ground uh, between the two of us. So one of our favorite and most used lenses is the 50mm 1.2 by Canon. Why the 50mm? Because it's really great for portraits, it gives you a nice bokeh, it's wide open at 1.2, so that lens is really really great. The autofocus on it isn't really that great and it also has a little bit of chromatic aberration, but I mean it's still I think the best lens when it comes to 50mm portrait. We're also looking at the 85 1.4 but we don't have that yet and we might actually purchase this in the future. But for most most of our commercial jobs, if we shoot some close-ups or somewhat close-ups, mid-shots as well as portrait shots, the 50mm 1.2 is definitely our favorite lenses and the lens to go. So last but not least is the Canon 100mm 2.8 macro. And a macro is really a lens you really want to have in your camera bag because it gives you these awesome close-up shots when you really need them. And it just makes for a different feel. And if you really want to cover a lot of ground from wide angle mid shots, close-ups, and these super close-ups with a macro, it really needs to be in your camera because it's really, really nice and it's not even that expensive. So that one definitely goes into our camera bag wherever we go as well. We were never going 
So what else does go into our camera backpack? And now we come to the other stuff. And this is for example, the Zion or Zoom crane, what I actually heard it's pronounced, uh, two. We also have a, a review about it on the C200. We also take it for our 1DX Mark II a lot of the times. And this one is really great because it just fits onto our backpack. We can just have it dangling on top of that and just go with it anywhere. And setup time is really just a minute or two. So especially when we're on a small island and we need to walk around and we don't really know what we have to expect on that island, this is way better than a big Ronin or a Movi Pro or something that we have to carry a, se a separate suitcase for and it's really, you know, a pain in the ass to walk around with. This one, just clamp it onto your backpack and you're good to go. So next up on our list is audio. So usually when shooting a music video you record scratch audio so you can sync it up late in post to the actual song and we don't really have performance scenes in this one since it's an electronic song, we don't have any vocals to record so we don't really need really expensive audio equipment for this one. So since we're going to do a vlog, you can check it out on our YouTube channel, obviously. Uh, we do bring a microphone uh, to get some you know, ambient sounds as well as our own talking head of course. So we bring the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus and I think this is the go-to for every YouTuber right now. Why? Because it costs about $300 or something and the audio is really crisp for that. Plus it has a built-in battery that powers on with your camera and powers off with your camera. So that is really really handy when you forget to turn off the audio then the battery drains and then you want to record something or maybe you start hit the record button but you forget to turn on the microphone and then there's no audio. Happened to me before and with that microphone it doesn't happen so that's why this is the number one choice for all YouTubers, vloggers and you know alike. So next one on our list because we're switching from handheld to gimbal on our camera and since it's really bright outside and the onboard monitor of all these cameras aren't really that great in bright sunlight, we also bring the small HD focus which is a 5 inch on camera monitor uh, which is really great because it's really bright, it has all these features that for example the 1DX doesn't have, focus peaking, uh, waveforms and all that stuff so you can have it on the monitor so we don't really need um, to rely on the on-screen monitor on the camera which really sucks when it comes to you know shooting outdoors or really shooting professional video. So this one goes usually on the gimbal and it just stays on the gimbal, it's clamped to with a clamp by a small rig and then when we're shooting handheld we have the other monitor that is by Canon as well so we can really easily switch just you know detach the audio of the monitor from the camera and then you know attach the monitor that is already on the gimbal and you're good to go within minutes. So one thing that's always in our camera bags is business cards because especially when you walk around with a lot of equipment with big cameras everybody keeps asking you hey you do photos you do videos and you know people start recognizing you they ask you hey what do you shoot for or where you're from so this one definitely needs to go into your business. So as for computing power, obviously this trip is only going to be a couple of days and we don't really need to do a lot of editing but we need to dump all of our footage somewhere. So when we're away for a month or something then we actually take our iMac and there's going to be a review soon on our YouTube channel about how we travel with all our big expensive gear with all our hard drives and the big computers but for this small job we only take the latest MacBook Pro which is good enough for most of our stuff. Unfortunately we only have one between the two of us uh, because it doesn't really make sense to buy a new one right now because I'm pretty sure there's going to be new ones be released next week at least I hope so. So the MacBook Pro goes with us into our bag most of the time so we can just you know dump footage of it and when we need to edit something that goes onto a two terabyte SanDisk hard drive because this is a Thunderbolt 3 hard drive and this is the fastest on the market right now. So this one is pretty good for you know just dumping off footage and actually editing 4k raw files of these babies. So our C200 has variable ND filters built in which is one of the best things I really like about this camera but when we're shooting with our DSLRs like the 1DX Mark II we don't have that so we need ND filters. So we have different ND filters for all of our lenses 
So when you shoot in bright sunlight, it actually functions like uh, shades for your camera lens. And then you can shoot within the sun and you don't really have to stop down to like aperture 8, 10, 12 or even 20 and can still get a nice bokeh outside during the sunlight. So these are really important and these are in our camera bags whenever we want to shoot video with a DSLR. So one thing that we really like using, because me personally, I hate camera straps. Whenever I try to take a picture, it dangles in front of the lens, it dangles in front of the viewfinder, I hate that. So I really can't stand these for shooting photos. But I really like these for shooting video. So what we have is we have a couple of those, and these are pretty cool. They're by a company called Peak Design, and they attach via a clip-on, and these clip-ons, they're on all of our cameras on the 5D, on the 1DX, as well as on the C200. So whenever we're shooting with one camera, we can just quickly switch uh, straps from one camera to another. And also it just literally only takes five seconds to get the strap off. So you don't have to fiddle with all that. And if you want to put the camera on a gimbal, it's really done within five seconds. So Bell has one, I have one, and these go interchangeable between all of our cameras. And these are really, really cool because they're really big, sturdy, and you can use them to stabilize your footage if you're shooting handheld or just carry your camera around. So there you have it. This is all the gear that goes into our camera bags. And speaking of camera bags, we use two different bags. And the first one is an actual backpack. It's the Low Pro, Pro Tactic, something or the other. And what you really like about this camera bag is that it holds a lot of gear and it also has the option to mount stuff on the outside. So you can mount a tripod or the stabilizer, which we usually do. And you can also mount these little pouches that hold uh, batteries or the cable ties or some stuff you really need to access quickly when uh, out in the field. The other camera bag isn't really a backpack, but then again it is. It's a carry-on and that is actually pretty cool because it holds a lot of gear. It also fits into your overhead department in your airplane and the really cool thing about it is that you can take the inside out and then use it as a backpack. And the even cooler stuff is that when you use it as a backpack, the carry-on still stays intact so you can put stuff into the carry-on. So you actually have two bags in one when traveling, which is really cool. So this bag we actually take everywhere. So this was the first edition of our Monkey Pixels What's in Our Camera Bags edition. And we might actually do more of these when we travel on bigger jobs and we take even more gear than that or even for a lighter edition when we just really want to travel with the least gear possible. I hope you liked this video so make sure to subscribe and also hit the notification button because then you get notified right away when we take you onto this job, onto the secret island. Uh, we will do vlogs, we will also do behind the scenes of the actual music videos as well as some travel videos using all that crazy gear. So make sure to hit all these buttons and then we'll see you on the next video.